Greetings fellow programmers, my name is Pavel and this is part two of our exercise where we are creating and working with the car class. Now in this video I will go over the task two which deals with creating another class and array of objects of cars. So let's go one by one. So implement a fleet class which contains an array of cars. The array should be 100 long implement the default constructor which creates the array all right so uh, let's just uh, add our class and i'll call it um, fleet so let's uh, i'm just gonna copy paste the instructions like i was doing in the previous video and um, and go through it step by step. So we created the class, that's the first step. And now we need the array of cars. So we have an, uh, our class called car and we need an array out of it and just call it cars. Now we have our array, but it's not uh, instantiated yet. Uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't use it, it doesn't have the size. That's what they want us to do in the second part. The array should be 100 long and implemented in the constructor. So uh, all we have to do is create our constructor for this class. So public fleet. Uh, no arguments in the in the constructor, but we'll instantiate our array. So our cars array now equal the new car array, and it has they want us to have uh, implement 100 long, so 100 indexes. Except it's not cards, but cars. All right, so um, yeah, this is really all there is to it to this point. Uh, so let's go to the second one. Implement an add method which adds a car to the fleet. The car to add should be a parameter of the method. Add the car into the next free slot uh, in the car array. And they give us a hint. You will need more field. You will need another field in the class which tracks where the next free slot in the array is and increments it after a car has been added. So this is a little longer, but it's not difficult and you'll see what they want us to actually do. So uh, let me just format it so I can actually see it. And so you can see it too. All right, so um, let's create the method first. So uh, we have our public fleet here, and um, I'm going to create the method called uh, public, and it's gonna be void because it doesn't return anything. We're just adding cars to the array. So I'll just call it public void add, and um, what we're going to pass to it, that's what I want us to do, add the car into the next free slot in the car array uh, and the car to add should be a parameter of the method so we need to pass an object of car into this method so we are uh, the type is car and an object will be called lowercase car now you can call this anything you can call it cx or whatever you want it's kind of a standard to just call it the name of the class except with lowercase so that's why i'm doing so uh, how do you add uh, the car to an array? Well, you simply do car, cars, which is our array, and an index. It's even asking for an index. And then it will equal to the car that is being passed as an argument. The thing here is that we don't know the index. Uh, is it zero? If you, if you, you cannot name, uh, hard code the index because you don't know how many cards will be added and that's why they give us in the hint that you will need another field that tracks the index basically so i'm just gonna call i'm just gonna create another another field called private uh, and it's gonna be an integer and i'll just call it counter and in our constructor i instantiate it to zero so our counter, when the object is create, fleet is created, is zero. So now we know it's a zero, but if you type zero, then it always will be zero and it will just keep overriding it. So 
instead you'll use the counter but then again counter is zero and it always will be unless we change it and that's the hint that they send us uh, that it needs to be incremented after each car is added so after the car is added all you do is counter plus plus increase the counter for the next car that is being added so in this case it is gonna be one so the array of index one will have a car next time it is created and it will be increased to two and the next uh, time a car is created it's gonna be pl placed into the index of two in our cars array all right so this is what they want us to this is what all these longer instructions mean all right so let's do three implement the method uh, calculate fleet value which calculates and returns the total value of the fleet which means basically summing up the value of each car in the fleet all right so um, let's do that and uh, i can already tell you we're going to be using some loop here and um, so let's create a method public it's gonna be uh it actually returns the the total so it's gonna be return the double calculate fleet value they don't ask us to pass any parameters and they don't have to because all the values are already in our cars array so all we have to do is just add them up together so i'm gonna create a local variable called total and i'll set it to zero at the beginning and like i said we need a loop we need to loop through all the cars that are in our array so um our for integer i equals zero and i is less than you can you can do the count of how many cars are in the array but we already know that because remember we have a counter that basically counts how many indexes are being populated and that's how many cars there are so we'll simply use that or reuse it so we will do i is less than a counter because that actually holds the number of cars in our array and i plus plus and in the body of the of the for loop we will simply do a total and add the to the sum or the value of the car that is being looped through currently so plus equals and the array of cars and what car it is well the one that has the index of i currently and there's a if you remember from the first video there's a method called get current value that returns the current value so we'll simply call that so what's happening here we have a total and we have a cumulative total with each iteration of the loop the next car or the, the value of the next car is being added to it and at the end after the loop we will return the total like they want us to do so we implemented the the method and we have our total and returning it from this method all right number four implement a method calculate stats which determines the value of the least valuable car in the fleet and the value of the most valuable car in the fleet and then returns them using output parameters i don't think this is a really good practice to do to return two values the output parameters are not that uh, yeah that, that that tends to be kind of frowned upon but if that is what i want us to do that's what we'll do normally i would have two method uh, methods i would have one that returns the uh, the least valued car and one that returns the most valued car but they want us to do it together in one method so let's do that all right so um It has written output parameters so we will do a public it's gonna be a void because it has a output parameters not a actually a returned value so uh calculate what was it stats and we had our output so our out and it's a double and i'll just call it least value because that's what they want they just want the value uh, right uh to, that determines the value of the least valuable car and the most valuable car they don't want us to actually 
return what car it is. They just want us to return what value or what is the least valued car uh, uh, price uh, and which one is the most valued price. So the second one will be obviously the out double for the output parameters. It's going to be double because we're talking about the current value of the car and it's going to be the highest value. So this is the signature of our method with two output parameters. So, so um, and um, to find the uh, lowest and highest value, uh, that's basically just a simple loop. So our least value, I'll assign it for to to start with or something to compare against. I will assign it the first uh, car. I'll assume that the first car is the least valued. So we will do cars index of zero, which is the first car and get current value. So that is the, it will return the, the price that is being passed into our least value. And that's what we are going to be comparing against with each other car in the loop. I mean, in the, in the array. And it's the same thing for the highest value. We'll simply pass the, the first car's uh, value to it. We'll also assume that it's the highest value. And it will make more sense uh, when you see the loop. So it's going to be a for, for loop again, integer i equals 0. i is less than, just like before, we can use the counter. And i++. plus plus. And now it's a basic conditional statement. So if, if the car that we are uh, looping through right now, if its current value is less than our least value, which is which which is the value of, that we are uh, having assigned to our variable list value, and that's going to be returned from our from our method. So if this value is less, then obviously we have a, we found a car that has a lower value than the one we had before. So we can reassign our least value to be the cars of i that get current value. So we simply swap them, or not swap them, but we assign a new value to our least value variable. And we do the same for the for the highest value, if that value, except it's going to be greater. So if this car's value is greater than our car's, than our um, highest value, then we know uh, oops, I forgot the current get current value. So if this is if the car's value is greater than what we have in our variable highest value, then our highest value variable will have a different value now, and it's gonna be taken from the current car that we are on inside this loop. And there is no return here. This is all the, the method because remember we are using output parameters. So at the end, after the loop. When the method ends, our list value we already loop through all the cars in the array and has the value or the price of the car that has the lowest price. And highest value holds the value of the car with the highest price and it's being returned as output parameters, both of these uh, least value and highest value. Okay, now five implement method get cars which returns an array of cars containing just cars for a specified year all right the specified year will be a parameter of the method the method needs to first needs firstly to count how many cars in the fleet are for the specified year and then construct a new array of just this size so we cannot do it like we did before it will simply create an array with 100 uh, uh, indexes and then copy in the cars car for the specified year and finally return this newly constructed array okay so it's longer again let me just uh, paste the whole thing there Okay, so uh, first to know that is they want us to create 
a specific array, I mean specific number of uh, elements that match uh, the number of cars that meet the condition for the year that we want the we want the cars, let's say, of 2015. So only the cars uh, that have the year 2015 will be placed in the array. So um, we will do our public car array that is being returned. This is our return type. It's an array of cars called get cars, and we are passing the string year into it. Uh, the year will be the the condition that we are looking for. So to get the number of cars that will actually meet this condition, let's just create a integer called count. I'll call it uh, initialize it to zero, and we'll do a, another simple for loop. Integer i equals zero. I is less than uh, the counter. We don't have to loop through all the elements, only through the ones that are actually being uh, populated. And i plus plus. Now, how do you find if the car is uh, uh, being uh, actually if it actually meets the condition? Well, you need to uh, compare the years, basically. So what we have to do is uh, if the cars the uh, the cars of the index i dot year or get year if that equals the year that is being supplied as an argument then we'll increase our counter so our count uh, is plus plus and at the end our counter will hold the number of uh, cars that will uh, or the number of slots that we need to reserve in our array so after the for loop we can create our array of those cars so it's gonna be array of cars again I'll just call it cars years and it equals new car with the size of the count that we just calculated here so it will match exactly or we'll have only as many elements as needed and uh, to populate it well we have to simply go through another for loop remember this is really not how you do it uh, you, like you know you could just create you could just loop through all the cars uh, that you created in hundred uh, you know like over 100 indexes uh, rather than creating a specific number of elements but that's what I want us to do so that's what we're doing so and in the final loop int i uh, equals zero i is less than the counter and uh, i plus plus so uh, now we have to uh, actually create another variable called index which will be increased as we are populating our new array of cars years just like we did with the counter before so i will just do integer index uh, and it equals zero and in our for loop we will do basically the same thing if the uh, let me just even copy it if the year matches then place that car into our cars years uh, array of the index so we will place that the cars i again this is kind of redundant uh, I don't know why they want us to actually create an array with the exact number of indexes when the first one doesn't have the index exact number of indexes we could have literally just used 100 because obviously there won't be more cars than 100 that meet the criteria for the year so we could we could have just used that but for some reason they wanted us to actually figure out how many there are beforehand so at the end we will simply return cars years and uh, okay this is uh, the task two so uh, in the next video we will go over the task three so stick around and I'll see you then